Hi friends, knocking a quick and dirty video together to document how to run Ghouls and Ghosts in MAME, although this will let you run anything in MAME really, uh, any supported game. Um, I'm normally a Linux user obviously, but I'll do this in Windows because most folks are going to be using Windows. Um, all these links that I've got here I'll put in the description of the video so you can find them pretty easy. Um, I'm hoping my ancient laptop uh, with the screaming fan isn't too loud, doesn't ruin uh, what my mic's picking up, but we'll see how we go. Okay, so first things first, um, grab your MAME binary from the MAME website uh, and save that somewhere. Uh, I like to stick it in uh, a MAME directory. Got one here. Uh, once that downloads, it's a, a 7-zip self-executing. You can either double-click to, to run it uh, and extract it, or just extract it if you've got 7-zip um, installed, which I recommend you do. Extract here. It's going to uh, extract not only the main binary, but a whole bunch of config files and uh, shaders and things like that, and we'll get to those uh, a bit later on, show you how to run those. Um, but MAME itself um, is a best run from the command line really, you can, you can double click it um, and things show up, I'll, I'll do that. Um, um, it takes an age to do and eventually loads with this pretty uh, terse GUI. Um, if you click on available ROMs it'll tell you what ROMs you've got, obviously we've got none. Uh, unfiltered, it'll give you a full list of ROMs with everything. It's got a little mouse kind of thing going on here. I don't know, it's all pretty terrible. Um, but I find uh, command line can give you a little bit of info about what's going on. Um, so if we go into our um, directory here and we run the main command line, um, if we, we try and sort of guess the game that we want to play, um, it'll do a bit of fuzzy logic uh, and come back and tell you the name of the, the ROM that you probably want to play. So for us, we want to play Ghouls and Ghosts, we want to play the world version of Ghouls and Ghosts. Uh, there's a USA version there. Um, world version's usually the one you want with MAME, typically is the, the first revision, um, particularly if there's a Japanese revision um, or a world revision. Uh, often there's censorship in the US, so they remove a lot. So uh, Ghouls is what they call the parent set in, in MAME lingo, and usually the one that you want. Um, and usually the simplest to run. Um, so that's the name of the ROM that we want, sort of simplifies that uh, hunting for it for us. Um, again, I'll link to this in the um, in the description, but this is uh, just sitting on archive.org. Someone's dumped the entire uh, 221 MAME set. Now we, we downloaded uh, 232. So the idea is that you want to get your MAME ROMs as close to your MAME binary as possible. There's frequent changes in the ROMs. I'll do redumps or fix stuff up or whatever. Um, so if you find games don't work, it usually means your ROMs are out of date. You've got to get, get newer ones. Um, but if they're close enough, typically they work. Um, best always to use the latest version of MAME. Don't go backwards and use old versions. Um, newer versions are always better. There's always new stuff in there that they, they fix up and better accuracy and whatnot. Um, so I'm just going to search here for that Ghouls ROM, and there it is, Ghouls Zip. Um, that's the one we want. I'm going to grab that, and I'm going to stick that in that same uh, MAME directory, but within there, there's a ROMs directory. And I'm just going to drop it in there. Um, so if we go back and have a look, in our ROMs directory, we've got our ghouls zip. Now, don't unzip that. Leave that as is. MAME expects uh, ROMs to be zipped up uh, in their sets like that in order for you to run it. Um, so from here, a couple of options. You can go back and just click this MAME.exe if you like. Again, this takes a while to load, I find, if you do it this way. Uh, and then hopefully if we click on available, there's our ghouls and ghosts. It's found it. Uh, we can double click it and start that way. Um, the way I prefer to do it usually just because that's me, um, is to run it this way. Uh, MAME with your ROM. Uh, it tends to execute a little bit faster. Um, so you welcome, you end up on this screen. Uh, tells you a little bit about the game, um, some info on the, the chipsets and things like that uh, that are in it. Um, it asks us to press any key to continue, so we'll do that. 
Um, sometimes you get a copyright screen too and the copyright screen says uh, press OK. You have to press the letter O followed by the letter K um, or you have to, uh, if you've got a joystick, just wiggle the joystick left and right. Um, often when the game starts you get this uh, hardware test and this is normal, this is what a real board would do. I'm just going to hit the F11 key, it's going to bring up the frame rate for us um, just to show that you know the thing's not lagging. Um, and if I'm going to press F3 now for reboot and we'll, we'll go through that process again. You can see it's not lagging in any way. This is the actual real speed of the real board. Um, floats around 99 to 101% just because of, um, you know, frame skipping, no, not frame skipping, frame syncing and whatnot on a, on a real PC. Um, but yeah, this is all pretty normal. And then once it's passed its uh, RAM test, I'll just press F11 again and get rid of that uh, counter, gets into the game. Um, now straight up, you can play it if you want. The number five on the keypad, uh, on, the, on, on your keyboard, as insert coin, um, insert as many coins as you want. The number one starts the game, it's the, the start button. This audio is pretty loud. Um, control and Alt. So Control is uh, button one, which is button fire. Alt is button two, which is jump in this case. Space button three, but we, I don't think we've got a button three in this game. No. Um, left and right, obviously for left and right. And off you go. So this gets you pretty much playing the game straight away. press the letter P for pause, you pause the game, it dims the screen a little bit, um, gives you some breathing room or if you need a toilet break or whatever, it's pretty good, pretty handy. Okay, so once you're in the game as well, there's a whole bunch of configuration options for the game itself that you can get into. Uh, if you just hit the tab key on your keyboard to bring up the menu, the MAME itself menu, um, you'll find this dip switches settings now. Uh, some games you have to press F2, which will take you into like a software test mode that the game had built in. Older style games, um, particularly like late 80s all the way up to sort of early 90s, they had dip switches, physical switches on the motherboard that configured things. Uh, so you just press enter to get into this menu and you can see all these dip switches here. Down the bottom you can see the actual switch banks uh, as they would appear on the, the board on the PCB, the arcade PCB itself, which is pretty cool. Um, and then just left and right just changes things now. Sometimes you can turn on a, a free play mode depending on the game. This one doesn't have it, uh, just uh, sort of one, co one coin, one credit's the best you can do there I think. Uh, you can change the cabinet type, whether it's uh, two players, cocktail, upright, whatever. It doesn't really make a difference um, from a software emulation point of view. Is more if you uh, if you did like cocktail cabinets where the second player is on the other side and it had to flip for player two or something like that. Uh, Difficulty is the useful one for um, Ghouls and Ghosts because it's so bloody hard. Um, if you go all the way down, so pressing left until I get to 1, which is easiest mode, uh, and all the way up to 8, which is hardest mode, um, I think that's pretty insane. Um, sticking on easiest is a pretty good way to sort of um, get used to the game, I guess. Uh, this one here is your bonus life, uh, so that's at 30,000 points, 60,000 points, and then every subsequent 70,000 points after that you get a bonus life. Again, you can turn that down to give yourself some more bonus lives earlier. Um, also, you can just set more lives, give yourself six lives instead of uh, three or whatever. Um, flip screen, again, if you you know if your physical arcade machine had the monitor uh, installed upside down or something silly like that, you can flip the screen, it's useless for emulation, um, whether or not you're allowed continues. Um, there is a, a built-in test mode as well, like it'll it'll test inputs and test the screen and whatnot. Um, same with the service mode. Uh, make sure you leave those to game. Uh, and then when you're done, go down here to reset and that'll actually reset the game with those um, those configurations applied. Uh, and again, you can just double check that. Go into dip switches and you can see it there uh, set. Uh, if you want to get out of this menu here, just hit the tab key again to get out. Don't hit escape. So it'll reset the the virtual uh, PCB, go through this um, RAM ROM test thing again. Uh, and we're back in here. And we should see like fewer enemies. Probably won't see much in this uh, opening section.
Alrighty, I'm going to do a cool little effect now um, that you can do with MAME if you don't like the, the sort of standard filter that comes with it. Um, it's going to use a tool that MAME includes called BGFX, uh, which is a, it's an open source framework to do filters and shaders and all sorts of cool things. Uh, if you look in your BGFX folder here, uh, you'll see some shaders, um, some GLSL shaders are the ones that I use mostly. Uh, and inside the chains directory, uh, you'll see this CRT geom, um, or CRT geometry is what that's short for. I'm going to use that. Uh, I think it's pretty cool. You don't have to use it if you don't want to. Um, if you don't care about uh, this sort of stuff, by all means, uh, jump to the next section. Uh, but to do that, we have to edit uh, the MAME configuration. Um, so MAME without in any file sitting in its default state. Um, and you can see what that is by running uh, MAME show config. Um, it'll spit out uh, the current state that MAME's running in. Um, if you want to set that in a file, the easiest way is to redirect that to an any file, um, which will just catch that all in an any file that we can then edit. Rightio, here's our any file. Um, now, if you want, there's heaps of stuff you can change in here. I'm going to just change the default video out uh, to, um, I think by default it uses DirectX on Windows, pretty sure, um, and SDL on Linux, I think, not sure, uh, but you can set it all here, uh, BGFX is what I want to set there, and then I also want to find the BGFX shaders section. Uh, and I'll set the change from default to uh, CRTGM was the folder name, um, and it's just going to use all those, uh, the, the chain of shaders, does all sorts of things, um, does it like a, a shadow mask grill and some warping of the edges of things, and we'll, we'll see it all in action in a sec, um, but that's just a, a quick way of enabling that. And then back to our command line again, uh, where we're on MAME ghouls, fire that up, and you can probably see it here, I'm hoping that my rubbish laptop can actually capture this real time and not slow down to like two frames a second. Um, it's looking okay on this side, I don't know what the capture side is like, but we'll find out I guess. Alright, but once we started, yeah you can see uh, the, the curved effect at the top of the screen, it bows more at the top. Um, and the bottom, plus the rounded edges, uh, plus the sort of the the CRT looking mask. Again, I think that's pretty cool. It's not a, not a bad way to experience these old games. Um, it does use a bit of uh, video card power, so if you've got a crappy video card, like I think this laptop's got a, a built-in uh, Intel card, and probably equally as rubbish uh, uh, AMD card in there too, I think. Uh, oops. Anyway. You get the, uh, the picture, if we can get a sprite up there. Um, yeah, I think it looks pretty cute. Uh, makes some games look really good, makes some games look a bit rubbish. Um, but I think overall it does a pretty good effect at simulating a CRT if, if you want that rather than just big blocky pixels or just bilinear filtering, which looks a bit smeared, I think. Um, so it's not a bad aesthetic thing. Um, I have heard it can add a frame of lag, uh, depending on which shader chain that you use. So if input latency is important to you, best to just turn all that off. Um, but otherwise, it's not a, not a bad way to go, I think. Alrighty, for this next bit, I've got my 8-bit Doe uh, gamepad. Um, whatever it is, the SF30 Pro uh, gamepad, I've got that plugged in. I've got mine in um, direct input mode, although X input mode uh, simulates an Xbox controller and it works pretty well. Um, it just verify the thing works. Any USB controller works. I've got a dozen cheap crap ones that work. I've got a uh, Nintendo Switch one that works. I've got PS3, PS4 controllers that work. They all work. Um, yeah. Uh, double check it works, uh, analog works, I don't like using analog though, I like using digital, that's the, the D-pad, says it's a hat, um, and all these buttons show up uh, pretty happily as independent buttons, which is cool, um, L triggers as well, great, super. Alright, so uh, back in a minute, I've deleted my main mini just to get rid of that VGFX um, filter, just because it hammers my poor crappy laptop when I'm recording in OBS as well. Uh, one day I'll upgrade from this 8-year-old POS, but not today. 
Okie jokey. All right, so we light up the game as usual. Um, now you don't have to wait for the game to start. You can just hit the tab button. Hit that once uh, and you get this crazy menu that pops up. Um, now, your choice, you can um, either input uh, specific, so when they say this machine, they're actually talking about the emulator machine. So in this case, it's the um, the Ghouls and Ghosts machine itself. Um, or you can set generic input. Um, because this is a very simple game, a couple of buttons and a couple of inputs, I don't mind setting the generic input. Um, so there's a whole bunch of different controls you can set. User interface controls is, is uh, if, if you want to use your joystick to actually move around inside this menu, you can. I'm not going to bother with that right now. I'm just going to go to player one controls, uh, and there's a whole bunch here, and we're not going to worry about too many of them, just the critical ones. So I'm just going to go to player one up. I'm going to press return on my keyboard, or enter on my keyboard, and then I'm going to push up on my D-pad. Uh, there it is. Uh, I'm going to do the same for down, and it does take a little while. Um, so if I push left now, you see there's about a second delay there. So don't uh, push two or three things in that time and be impatient. Impatient, just uh, wait. Uh, I'm going to do it again for right. I'm not going to worry about all these crazy diagonals. So they will just work. Um, button one, which is going to be your attack button. I'm probably going to make uh, that button. Make it whatever you like. Button two. Then you can go and, and configure all these if you got, you know, you want to do some Street Fighter -y kind of business or whatever. Um, you can do that. I don't want to do that. Um, if you if you get something wrong, like if you push Enter here and it's not the input you want, don't hit Escape because it'll bind Escape to that. Push some button somewhere uh, off to the side. Be wary of things like the the P for pause on your keyboard. Don't hit that. But uh, yeah, don't don't make the mistake of hitting Escape there because that is stuffed. Um, once you're done, uh, you have to uh, go all the way to the bottom, return to previous menu. Uh, if you want to go into other menus, do player 2, player 3, player whatever. I don't. I can just press tab to go back to the game. Um, and again, oh, the other thing is if you go to... Um, no, it's not in there. It is in the other controls, I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, so your start, that's uh, uh, number one on the keypad, on the number system at the top there, um, and coin is five. So you can set those to buttons too if you want. Um, if you're building an arcade machine, that's normally what you do. Uh, I'm just running on my PC, I don't care. Alright, so five for some credits, one to start. Uh, jam on my, okay, so now I'm using my uh, USB controller, and it's functioning as expected. Not a problem. A bit of uh, V-Sync tearing here, which I can clean up with a few different options. Yeah, MAME also supports um, variable refresh and G-Sync and a few other things. Um, if you want to know how to use that, let me know. Oh, I won't go into that here because A, I can't because of this crappy old laptop and B, it's a little bit complicated and long. Um, but anyway, that's kind of the uh, the long and the short of it. Uh, if you've got any questions, ask me in thread. Um, otherwise, hope you enjoy the game. See ya.